In all the hubbub of the holiday season, it's easy to forget what's really important. Raspberry Pi computers, LEDs, and hockey. In this how-to episode, I'll show you how to build your own NHL scoreboard that automatically displays live game data for your favorite hockey team. Not a hockey fan? Not to worry. The purpose of this video isn't just to combine hockey and technology, but to teach you how to work with and control LED panels using a Raspberry Pi. Armed with this knowledge, you can create all kinds of displays, like a weather dashboard, Tetris clock, text, photos, and more. Here's how it works. We'll connect a small Raspberry Pi computer to an LED panel using a small breakout board. Then, a software library will automatically retrieve your favorite team's current and upcoming game data and display it on the screen. When a game is in play, it will show the current period, score, game clock, and even an animation when a team scores. There's also a pre-game, post-game, and no-game state. And for all you baseball fans, there's even an MLB library. Everything is housed in an optional 3D printed enclosure. Now the total cost for this project is around $100. This is a beginner friendly project that should take you less than an hour to complete. Now in the video description, you'll find the full guide as well as links to everything that you'll need. Let's get started. Okay, so here's everything you're going to need for this project. Um, you're gonna need a Raspberry Pi computer, any one will do. I'm gonna use the Raspberry Pi Zero W because it's only $10 and it has Wi-Fi built in. You'll need an SD card for it, any size. You'll need this bonnet or hat, which is basically a board that allows the Raspberry Pi to interface with the panel. So you can easily send images to it and this just snaps right onto the Raspberry Pi. This is an optional power button, which I'll cover later. You don't really have to have this, but um, you can put that together if you want. And you'll need the LED panel itself. So this panel is made by Adafruit. It was about uh, 70 or $80. This has a five millimeter pitch, which means that the LEDs are five millimeters apart. If you wanna get one that's a three millimeter pitch with the same number of LEDs, it's just physically smaller, so keep that in mind. They have a lot of different sizes and they're all about the same price. So I actually ordered this large one by mistake. I meant to get the smaller one. I didn't realize the, the whole pitch thing. So, uh, you know, that's part of the learning process. So this one is 64 pixels wide by 32 pixels tall. So you get a pretty decent resolution and it is a pretty good size. Now I'm 6'5", so I have pretty big hands, so it's kind of hard to tell, but here's a ruler for scale. So this is about a foot long if you get the five millimeter pitch version. Lastly, you'll need a power supply that's ample to drive both the panel and the Pi. So um, this one is made by Adafruit also, and this is four amps at five volts. So this will power both the Raspberry Pi and the panel. You don't actually need a housing for this if you want to use it as is. It comes with these magnetic feet, which are pretty cool. So you could like stick it on something. Or if you want, you can 3D print a housing. So that's what I did since I have a 3D printer. Um, I have a link to the model in the video description if you want to check it out. If you want to just use the panel by itself, you can stick it to something metal or you can just lean it up on your shelf or use like a little um, one of those little you know plate or picture holders and just stick all the components on the back. So I'm going to go ahead and use the housing because it's awesome. And also for the housing, you'll need these little metric uh, bolts and nuts. Now there are two parts to this project. There's the hardware part and the software part. In this video, I'm going to cover the hardware part primarily because it's the most interesting. Software is important, but I've written a step by step. Here are the commands you run in the guide in the video description. So check that out. Otherwise, the people who aren't doing it right now won't really enjoy themselves watching me type on the computer. So this is the RGB matrix bonnet for Raspberry Pi. This will attach to any Raspberry Pi computer, even the large ones. Again, I'm using the Zero W here. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and just slide it onto the 40 pin GPIO header. Now, if you have some standoffs, which I do, uh, a ton of them, then you can use these to help hold it away from the board. Should be fine without it. But if you wanna do the little bit extra, you can add these standoffs. I have this power button. And what the power button does is it allows us to safely shut down and uh, restart our Raspberry Pi. You don't want to just yank the, the cord out of the wall. It's like having a desktop computer and just like ripping the power cord out every time you want to shut it down. So I have this button. I have a separate video and guide that I did for this recently that'll show you how to set this up. Now how this power button works is it attaches to two pins on the Raspberry Pi's GPIO header. And then the software looks for basically those pins being shorted together, which happens when you push the button and then it will shut the Pi down. And then likewise, when you short those two pins together, when the Pi is powered off, it'll turn the Pi on. The bonnet actually covers the GPIO header, so we can't easily access them. But what's nice about this Adafruit board is that they uh, move these pins off to the side so we can still access them. So what I did was I soldered a couple little pins on here, and now we can connect our power button to it. Again, the software is in the full guide, but it's pretty straightforward. So I'll mention a couple of interesting things about it. So we're going to use a library called NHL LED Scoreboard and the library retrieves game data from the unofficial NHL API and displays it on the screen. 
So basically you'll just run four or five commands to install the library and its dependencies. And then you set your favorite team in a JSON file, like a little config file. And then when you boot up the Raspberry Pi, it'll automatically show game data. Now, if you have access to a 3D printer, go ahead and print the case that I've included. And if you use a different size display, you can find different cases on Thingiverse that you can download and print. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer and you'd still like to have the housing printed, there are a ton of ways to do that. Uh, a lot of local libraries now have 3D printers. If you're a university student, your university likely has one. There are also online services that you can pay and you just send them the model and they'll print it and then ship it to you and they're really inexpensive. Um, you can also look on Craigslist or other boards where people offer 3D printing services. Uh, you might be surprised what you find. So you might have noticed on my bonnet that I have a little red wire soldered right here. So this is actually a mod that you can do to reduce flicker. So by default, the way that the um, Raspberry Pi and the bonnet draw the display, uh, like a little bit of flickering can occur. But by soldering a wire here between pins 4 and pin 18, it tells the Raspberry Pi to use PWM or square, square wave mode to um, draw the display and it gets rid of the flicker. So you'll need a soldering iron to do that obviously. And you'll also need a soldering iron to add these pins for the power button. But again, both of these things are optional. So if you don't have a soldering iron, this is not a good reason not to do the project. So now I'm gonna show you how to assemble the actual 3D printed housing should you decide to print it. And it's made up of two core parts. There's like an inner frame, which is printed in two pieces. So it'll fit on your printer. And then there is the outer case. So all these parts mount using M3 by eight millimeter or 10 millimeter bolts and nuts. This side has ports on it where I put my power button and you wanna make sure that this side is over where the input port is. So the outer cover will slip right over and over here I've stuck nuts in these little slots that we can screw to from the outside. So this model also came with this Raspberry Pi sled and I think the idea was that it would it would fit in here and then you could attach your Raspberry Pi here. But I have two problems. One, it won't actually fit in here. So I thought maybe I could flip it over. The other problem is that you have to use these M3 nuts that you stick in here and then bolts. But the Raspberry Pi's holes are actually too small for an M3 bolt to fit through. So I have no idea how this was ever supposed to work. So for the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and use some nice high quality M3 double-sided foam tape. If you have a case for your Zero, or if you want to 3D print one, you can also just foam tape the case in here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect the data cable. You'll notice on this display, there are two identical ports on the display itself. There's an input and an output. So these are designed to be chained together. So I guess you, if you had enough money, you could build like a giant display out of all these panels. Um, so I'm just doing the one. So we really only need the input. I'm going to go ahead and flip this around. Okay, so now I'm gonna connect that to our bonnet. This is the power cable that came with the panel. It has this pigtail on it because it's actually meant to power multiple panels, but we're just gonna power one. So by default, it comes with these pitchfork connectors on it. And that's because usually you have a terminal block power supply that these panels use, but we're just gonna power it directly from the bonnet. So I went ahead and I cut these off and then I stripped them. And the purpose here is that if we connected the pitchfork connectors to our terminal block, then one end would be sticking out and could short against something. So this is a much safer way. So the terminal block on the bonnet has a positive and a negative. Obviously the red goes into the positive side and then the black into the negative, and then we'll tighten it down with the screwdriver. And then the other end just goes into the power input on the panel. That's it. Zip ties for days. Okay, we have only two more connections to make. So if you're gonna use the power button like I did, then go ahead and connect it to these two pins that you soldered onto the, uh, the bonnet here. One is ground and one is the SCL pin. And the last thing that we would do here is just go ahead and connect our power and this plugs into the wall. So those are all the connections that you have to make, whether you have a case or not. Here's the outer part of the case. So um, there are actually three holes here and each one gets a bolt and a nut to hold this, uh, the two sections together. And we're just gonna wanna go ahead and run the power cord through here. Now, if you want to get extra fancy, you could actually solder like a DC barrel jack port on here, but uh, I don't have time for that, so sorry. Okay, next you're gonna to want to run it through this port here, and then go ahead and plug it in. Lastly, we're gonna go ahead and take some of our M3 bolts, and we're gonna put them in here to seal the case. I use this kit and it's very invaluable. So uh, I recommend picking one up for projects like this. And there you have it. 
Man, that turned out nice. So the only thing left to do is plug this into the wall using the other part of the cable. If you wanted to, you could probably put this inside or mount it to the back. Um, I just left it out for, for ease of this video. That about does it for this how-to episode. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. Check out some of our other ones. We do cool projects like this all the time. And as always, thank you very much for watching.